47, Genesis 47. Uh, Joseph's folks have come back to Egypt and they've brought everything with them, the cat, the dog, the whole nine yards. And this is, remember now, this is the second year of a seven-year famine or a seven-year season of lack. And uh, Joseph's brother's quality of life took an immediate improvement. But remember, this is only year two. Yes, it was a time of of, of, of happiness. It was a time of uh, rejoicing after, uh, after some candid, I'll say, some candid conversations. And remember when he was sending them back, he said something that was very peculiar. He said to his brothers, don't quarrel among yourselves on the way back. You see, with all of what had happened to Joseph and all of, uh, all of the good and the bad, because a lot of bad happened, and, uh, and keep this in mind, saints, we're talking about Joseph's family, but we're also talking about our family. And uh, Joseph knew the tendencies, and some of us like to say Joseph knew the character, but Joseph knew the character and tendencies and ways. He remembered how his brothers were with each other. He remembers how they were toward him. He remembered uh, sharing some things with his father, and his father would listen. And on several occasions, his father basically said, and I'm paraphrasing right now, and, I'm, and, and it's as if my dad had said to me, Barry, that's nice, but let's keep that between us. And there was a reason why Joseph's father would listen at what he had to say. And even though these things, this, is, this came from God. This is what the Most High shared with me about me, Dad. And of course it made his father proud. Of course it blessed his father. But his father gave him some instructions. He said, hey, man, that's nice. But hey. Let's keep that between me and you. And see, you know, some of us have had conversations with one parent or maybe both parents together. I, I don't know. But uh, some things may have been shared, and you may have shared something uh, that you didn't share with your siblings, and you may have just told your mom, or you may have told your dad, or whatever. And uh, sometimes they would listen, and you didn't have to worry about your mom or dad sharing what you shared with them to the rest of the family. I, uh, I got tickled. Uh, this was years and years and years back in the heyday of EWC. Uh, 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 some members had had a conversation with uh, my mom, and I, you know, I, I guess it was a, a, obviously it was a serious situation. And uh, they later were surprised to find out that what they shared with her, she didn't share with pastor. And it kind of threw some people because, of course, the system teaches us there are no secrets between spouses. 
And uh, I'm not going to get into that one way or another, but it, it shocks some people because they just automatically assume, you know, uh, that conversation would take place, you know, or, or whatever. But what I shared with the people that told me about that, I said, well, if the conversation was in confidence, she kept your confidence. And see, that's the way we got to be with each other. <laughs> uh, sometimes knowing when to remain quiet keeps a lot of confusion from coming to the sur surface. See, it's not, you, 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 we don't have to always tell it like it is. Particularly if in the telling, it may bring about trouble. Part of the reason why, and I don't, I'm not saying this like I was there, because I wasn't there. But he told his brothers, don't quarrel among yourselves, because see, they had just had a moment. He had, he had, they came clean with him after he came clean with them. And if you remember, he, he listed most of the things that they had done to him. But then he said, but I forgive you. And they were... You know, they were a little taken back because they, they knew better than he knew what they had done to him. And they knew in the group, some of them was, yeah, let's let him have it. And some was, well, but collectively they all agreed, okay, well, we're going to leave him in the pit because he bragged too much. And see, you know, I, I, you know, a lot of us, and again, I'm not throwing rocks or throwing shade because... We're learning about them. They're not learning about me, you, or anybody else. But it was outlined the way it was because sometimes, particularly when our parents tell us something, they have a reason. And it's more than just because I said so. We get that response because we've asked why I got to do that too many times, and we frustrated them. Now, I'm not saying that every time they say, because I said so, that that was right. And they know sometimes it's maybe not right. But we should learn over life because, see, when we ask why, now our children and our grandchildren asking us why. Did we forget we did the same thing to our parents and possibly grandparents? So the reason he told them, don't quarrel, because they had a beautiful moment. They had reconciled. The family unit was back intact. And basically what he was kind of telling them, brothers, don't ruin the moment trying to place where well, you're more responsible for this than me because I didn't want to do it. You know how we are. Some of us sing like a canary when the jig is up. Some of us going to be a true soldier and we're just going to take what's coming to us. But everybody's not the same. Growing up in the same household. Family dynamics. Mm, mm, mm. In 11. No, that's, yeah, that's 11. Joseph found a place for his father and brothers and gave them property in the land of Egypt, in the best region of the country, in the land of Ramses. 
as Pharaoh had ordered. Again, I touched on that. You know, usually when we hear Pharaoh, we think bad guy. Pharaoh is a vessel just like you and I are vessels. The most high use what he used how he want to. And sometimes it's not in our, it's not on our schedule. Sometimes, you know, Father, I wish you had done this last week. But his time is the right time. And we, we, we forget that sometimes. We forget that sometimes because of what's happening to us in life. Sometimes we get in a situation and we're saying, Father, where you at? And he's saying, I'm here with you, but I didn't tell you to go left. You went left on your own. But I'm still with you. And I've, I've told you before, when things, when things are really miserable in my life, this is how I start asking questions. I say, well, how long we going to stay in this? Because you can change this. Now, you know, he no bear, you trying, you trying to gain me? There's no game man has devised that's going to throw me. Oftentimes, he says no to us, or he says not yet. And if we keep going after him, going after him, eventually he says, you want that? Then have it. So you end up maybe going into business I'm not saying that that person is wrong, but they were wrong for you in that business. Sometimes it's of a social nature. Enough said about that. But what I'm saying is we can keep going after him until where he says, all right, fine, Barry, if that's what you want, then have it. And more often than not, there comes a day, there comes a time where I say, man, I should have took not now or I should have took no. Because see, some of us, we only think that our faith works when he says yes. No, sometimes your faith works and he says no because of your faith. But do we have the wherewithal to accept that no is what's best because no comes from the one that could have said yes. There's a reason he said no. And it's usually because it's not in our best interest in doing the things that he would have us do. I'm not saying we got to be robots because we're not. All of this is in Joseph. Yes, all of this is in Joseph. Joseph provided food for his father, his brothers, and all his father's household, taking full care of even the youngest. And that was Benjamin. You know, like I said, I was getting on the human side of Joseph. I, I, you know, and, and, and I could be wrong, but I surmise there might have been a little bit of envy, a little bit of jealousy. Why? Because Benjamin was his father's new favorite. Because his father at the time thought Joseph got tore up by a wild beast. But when he gave them, when he, whenever he, he took care of his brothers, but he really took care of Benjamin. Mm. But listen at this now. Now, now, what I just read, their quality of life had increased. They went from out of where they were at with the father saying, hey, man, take some vittles and go up there and get us something to eat. Man, we're going to starve down here to what? He want what? And he obeyed everybody. He moved everything, picked up everything, and, and went. 
So life is good again. But remember now, I keep reminding you, this is year two. Five more years of challenge to go. And what am I saying? What I'm saying is, yes, reprieve comes. It comes in waves. But folks, that's not the end of the story. We have in our lives sometimes situations, and it seems insurmountable, and he brings us through. But that's not the end of the story. Well, Barry, are you saying we should not rejoice and give thanks? Oh, no. Yes, rejoice and give plenty of thanks. But stay on point. Another day is coming. I'm not saying that it's going to be another day of trouble. It might be, but it might not be. But the same one that delivered you out of that thing, the same one that delivered us out of that dilemma can deliver us again and again and again. Do we really understand who he is in our lives, or have we just learn a lot of slogans and jargon and we say a lot but is our much saying matching up with our much doing Torah causes you to do what we call gospel encourages you to tell Torah is for doing. I'm not talking heresy. Stay with what I'm saying. Torah is for us to do, to do, to do. And in the doing, our faith builds. Faith is more than the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'm not throwing rocks at the ministry that really took off because of that. There's more to it than that. I've said, and again, I'm not saying it like I was on the board when he wrote it. No. Read Psalm 101, about the first 12 verses, not right now, in your, in your time. Because it talks about, the Most High is telling us, he's telling us pretty plain. He's like, listen, and I'll use myself. He's saying, Barry, you know, you got some issues, bro. And uh, you asked the question, when will I come to you? He said, I will come to you when you stop doing those little ugly things that you do. When you stop thinking those little ugly things you think about. Now, we all know that, read it now, because most of us think that when uh, David said that because that's who they attribute most of Psalms to. That he was saying, uh, I'm perfect, I'm mature, I'm this. No, that was the most high saying, this is how I can, I can come around in this type of atmosphere. And he was talking about how we're to go about in our homes, not how we are here. He was talking about in your home. Read it, read it, read it. Not now, but read it. And you might look at it a little differently because of a lot of the ways it was taught to us and preached to us was like David was saying all of this about himself. And he asked the question, well, when will you come to me?
And he already knew. He said, hey, you know, I'll never leave you or forsake you. So even when we're going contrary to the teachings and instructions, he's still with us, but he ain't happy. He's not, he, he's not, he's not as pleased. Let me put it that way. Maybe that's a little more palatable. Is all of that in joke? Yes, it is. It's in, it's, it's in this. Saints. He took care. He provided for his father, his brothers, and all his father's household. That's the wives, the cousins, the whatever, everybody. Everybody's situation got better from where they came from to where they are now. Year two. Let's read a little further. And as we read further, think about your present family situation. Let me say this too. Now this I can say. Because I'm teaching on this, If I bring up a situation or a subject matter and it happens to hit home, let me say this now. The Most High is not telling me your business. You know who the Most High is dealing with me about? Me. See, the system has got us to where we thinking sometimes if I, if I go to church and the pastor look at me a certain way or whoever, they look at me a certain way. I know God told them, well, can he do it? Yeah, he can. But again, he's not a, um, he's not a, uh, he, he's not our puppet. He's not our genie. You know, folks, I only know my situation well. So I'm not trying to get off on somebody. I, I, I got my own weeds to pull. But we're going to go through this together because this can help all of us and help our relationships within our family. Reading a little further. Now, we just finished saying everybody was living large. Then listen at this. It says, there was no food anywhere in 13. There was no food anywhere, for the famine was very severe, so that both Egypt and Canaan grew weak from hunger. Now, just earlier, we just read everything was wonderful because they got out of a tough situation into a better situation, but not many days forward, here come famine. Here comes lack. Watch this. There was no food anywhere. For the famine was very severe, so that both Egypt and Canaan grew weak from hunger. Joseph collected all the money there was in Egypt and Canaan in exchange for the grain they bought and put the money in Pharaoh's treasury. Now, we, we, we read that and we go, well, wait a minute, what is he doing? What is he doing? You know, why didn't, why didn't Joseph just, see some of us, because of the way we've been taught, some of us are think, why didn't Joseph just open up things and just let the people come and get whatever they wanted? Notice this. See, Joseph was... Pharaoh was his employer, if you want to look at it that way. 
Joseph acted in integrity. Now, from our standpoint, we would say, well, why didn't he just give it to everybody? I'm going to read that again because I'm, 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 I'm trying to make a point here. It says, Joseph collected all the money there was in Egypt and Canaan in exchange for the grain they bought and put the money in Pharaoh's treasury. Listen at this. When all the money in Egypt had been spent, and likewise in Canaan, all the Egyptians approached Joseph and said, give an ear, give us something to eat, even though we have no money. Why should we die before your eyes? Joseph replied, remember now, y'all smile on Joseph. And see, we've been trained. See, sometimes, saints, even, and, 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 and I'm, listen, I'm encouraging all of us to get our houses in order because we're going to have to help people. But we need to learn how to be strategic. I didn't say cunning. I didn't say deceptive. Be strategic. Because, see, sometimes you go rushing in and you may overextend yourself and now you can't help anybody else. And sometimes we're in such a rush, we end up doing more than we should. It's like uh, the example, a guy is uh, using his mule, I guess, tilling a garden or whatever, or oxen. And uh, Greg's doing his, uh, no, let me, put it this way. I'm tilling my garden and I got the oxen going. Greg come by. He said, man, you, you look like you're struggling there. Yeah, man, I'm struggling. And Greg go to helping me. And here's what I do. And here's what sometimes we do. Greg over there driving the oxen, got the thing going. You know what I'm doing? I'm sitting down and I'm drinking lemonade. Because Greg's my brother in the Lord. And so now I'm sitting down drinking lemonade, and he out there sweating. Now, if my heart was right according to Torah, not according to society, and my heart was right, and this brother's coming to help me. I should have I kept out there with him, and we could have maybe gone twice as fast. Don't answer, but just think about it. Have you ever seen a situation, and you jumped in, and you had good intentions, and next thing you know, you turn around, and you holding, you dealing with the whole thing by yourself? And then sometimes saints a misinformed, they over there praising God and the battle's still going on. Except they ain't in the battle. You in the battle. You fighting their battle. And they should be in there helping you because you got in to help them. Fellas, again, don't just think about this. You ever been out of side of your neighborhood and you went somewhere and some trouble got started? How many of the fellas you with took tuck tail and ran? Don't, just, just, just think about it. And I hope that's never happened to you. See, what I'm saying is everybody that's always with you talking about we brothers may not necessarily be so. So we need to be careful even in coming to help, coming to assist, even the listen, 
All of us know about, all of us remember Pastor Green. I always used to talk about the paraclete, one call alongside to help, but not the one call alongside to do all of it while we got our feet propped up drinking lemonade. The Holy Spirit is called along to assist. Not do it all for you. Listen, when the spies went out to survey the land, that the Most High said, I'm going to show you a land flowing with milk and honey. We all know the story. Ten of them came back with a bad report. And some of y'all got a song, Who Reports Shall You Believe? That's what they talk about, y'all. Um, Ten said, man, there's giants in the land. Now, remember, the most high, after all he had done for them in the wilderness, he said, I'm going to give you this land. But he said something key that a lot of the system managed to not magnify. Yes, God did say that I'm going to show you a land with milk and honey, and he was going, he, he said, I'm going to give it to you. But he said three words after that. He said, go possess it. Listen, if you hungry, and you want something to eat. I'm gonna use Greg again. I said, Greg, I'm hungry. Greg said, well, Vern ain't cook nothing. But, no, and I, I know she can cook. I'm, I'm just <laughs> using the <this. laughs> And I said, man, you know, I'm hungry. And uh, he said, well, man, you know, uh, it's, it's early, man. Uh, well, look, uh, I, man, I, I got something I got to do. Uh, here, here's, here's $20. Go get yourself something to eat. But I just stand there, Greg, I'm hungry. See, if I don't, if he extends his hand with the $20 bill. And I keep saying, Greg, I'm hungry. What do I got to do? I got to possess it. I got to stick my hand out and take the $20. And see, a lot of us, we're like that. We're in a, a crisis. We're in a situation. And the Most High is giving the answer, but we won't possess it. And then we get under the mistaken assumption, God didn't answer. He did answer but he gave you something else to do. And that's why I keep saying, talking, talking, talking only is not getting a lot accomplished. You got to have some action behind the talk. That's the difference between what we're getting and what Torah saying do. Even in the word, what did it say? Be ye not only hearers, but doers. Amen. That's not a suggestion. Amen. All of that, yes, it's all in here. Mm, 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 mm. There was no food anywhere, for the famine was very severe, so that both Egypt and Canaan grew weak from hunger. Joseph collected all the money there was in Canaan, and in, a, and in exchange for the grain they bought, and put the money in Pharaoh's treasury. When all the money in Egypt had been spent, and likewise in Canaan, all the Egyptians approached Joseph and said, Give us something to eat even though we have no money. Why should we die before your eyes? Joseph replied, give me your livestock. If you don't have money, I will give you food in exchange for your livestock. I take you back, folks, 
and most of us know about this, it's in the scriptures that even the most I said, even the poorest of poor got to give something. Folks, there is no free lunch. You've heard me say that. I have said, yes, it didn't cost you, but it cost somebody. You know, some of our relationships have taken a turn for the worse. And part, I, I, I would dare say, if I was a betting man, and I'm not, and I'm not saying I'm not a betting man because I'm all, no, 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 no. I figure I'm going to lose. <laughs> That's why mostly I ain't going to bet. <laughs> Reciprocity. Reciprocity. Somebody in the relationship is taking more than they give. And I'm not, again, I'm not talking about this, 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 this. That's the new thing now. No. Reciprocity is They're doing for you, you're doing for them, and it's not, you're not keeping score. Okay, uh, we went shopping today, and uh, you bought me a pair of sneakers. I'm going to take you shopping tomorrow. Um, well, I, I like that. Well, I'm, I ain't going to get that for you. Them sneakers won't, but I don't know, whatever, whatever. See, if that's your mindset, that's not reciprocity. Someone does, uh, does you a, a favor. Doesn't even have to be monetary. And you say you really appreciate it. And you really appreciate it. And well, there's another part to this. If you really appreciate it, I'm sure you did thank the person. But something inside you say, you know, hey, that was a, that was a, boy, did they come at the right time. And you might even give a testimony about it. Well, how about you get a nice card or something? How about you, whatever, if you think you're so good at baking or something, bake the person or something. Find out what they like. Do the little, little extra thing. See, see, reciprocity comes out of true appreciation. And true reciprocity is more than Remember how we always say, well, I repented. I said I was sorry. Well, if all you said was you were sorry, isn't that kind of light? Again, if uh, Greg gave me $50, because uh, my lights was getting ready to get turned off. I said, Greg, I'm going to give it to you. And we in church. And whoever, they pray, man, a man of God ought to be a man of his word. And I get convicted. I get convicted 2024 20, style with believers. I'm going to show you. If I get convicted in 2024, since people always want to try to remind y'all of what the date is, like that means something to him, I go to Greg and I say, bruh, I know I was supposed to give you that $50, and I still ain't got it now, but I'm sorry, bruh. Now, I think, now, I think I done repented. What Torah would say, Torah would instruct me, 
to not only give him his money back, whatever I got to do, I'm not go and rob somebody. Torah will say, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. Torah will say, Barry, you got to inconvenience yourself because this brother did that action because you asked him to and he was, he was there for you. Torah would say, Barry, think about how many people wouldn't have given you the $50 or lent you the $50 and told you, be blessed, be fed, let me pray with you, 2024 style. There's a difference when all you got to say is something to people. Torah encourages you to do to do, to do. And there's a difference. Our quality of life improves in the doing. And I, like I said, I'm gonna bring in some Sheva Oat next week if I have the privilege of, because they were, in, they, that power came from on half of work, not for, I'll call that next week. Not for what we think it is. Yes, we're to commemorate. Yes, we're to remember. Yes, but we're to remember what it was for. It's more than just a program. There are further marching orders. There are further marching orders. They're asking us to refine what we understand about Torah. Refine your doing. Refine your doing. And in the refining of the doing, your faith builds. That kind of faith, immuna faith, not, I'm going to use this term, not gospel faith. Two different things. I've told you before. There's more to faith than being the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I'm not throwing rocks. Mm, mm, mm. Joseph said, give me your livestock. If you don't have money, I will give you food in exchange for your livestock. So they bought Joseph their livestock, and Joseph gave them food in exchange for the horses, flocks, cattle, donkeys. All that year, he provided them with food in exchange for all their livestock. Now, remember, Joseph is employed by Pharaoh. Now, some of us would think, well, wait a minute. If Joseph's spirit sealed and da 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 Joseph transacted things with integrity. He didn't, it didn't say he skimmed some off and gave it to his father. He didn't say he took some off and gave it to his brothers. What did it say? It said all that he collected, he put it in Pharaoh's treasury. Why? Because Pharaoh said, Joseph, I'm Pharaoh, but you're running things for me. And the reason he did that is because he knew Joseph to be a man of integrity. And again, when we hear Pharaoh, we automatically assume almost evil. But again, Pharaoh, like everything else in creation, is nothing more than a vessel of the Most High. <laughs> and sometimes we forget that. Hmm. Listen at this. When that year was over, they approached Joseph again and said to him, 
We won't hide from my Lord that all our money is spent and the herds of livestock belong to my Lord. We have nothing left as my Lord can see but our bodies and our land. Why should we die before your eyes, both we and our land? Listen to this, folks. Buy us and our land for food, and we and our land will be enslaved to Pharaoh. Don't answer. But how many of us even remember that aspect of Joseph's story? Most of what we remember is some bad stuff happened to him. We know, we remember this situation about Potiphar's wife. We remember about how he got put in the, in the pit. We know he went to jail. We know he got out. We know his brothers came and they had this big reconciliation, which is all wonderful. And for a while, Joseph was able to bless his family and everybody. And it was good until it wasn't. Folks, what I'm sharing with you is life is good for all of us until some challenges come on the horizon. And I'm not saying this to frighten you. And I'm not saying this to frighten me either, because we in this together. We are in this together. The haves and the have-nots and the middle class, which we are all a part. But these challenges affect everybody, but it affects us differently. Well, Barry, are you trying to slip in that in Torah, God is a respecter of person? No, I am not. That's not what I'm saying. Please do not interpret that. That is not what I'm saying. But I am saying this, Joseph's family, they felt the famine, but it was still better than the famine they were dealing with in Canaan. Keep your eye on that, and I say that for a reason, because see, sometimes the reprieve comes, and if it don't come where we were down here, and if we're not way up here, we think, he didn't really answer. Or he could have answered in a greater magnitude. Saints, he answered. Because the agony that you felt, that burden got a little lighter. Remember when uh, they was talking about the time when Yeshua prayed for this guy and Something was wrong with his sight. He prayed for him for a little bit. He said, well, I can see a little something, something, something. Then he prayed for him again. Ah, it got a little clearer, got a little better. See, we, we want instant everything in 2024. We think how we vote going to solve everything, or if we don't vote, it's going to solve everything. And I'm bringing that up for a reason, too, because, see, while the famine was going on, there was a government of some type still being run. That's how what's happening there is happening today. But here in the scriptures, is the people seem like they were focused on one thing. We hungry. We hungry. You got my money. You got my livestock. I ain't got nothing left but myself and the land I got. And again, 
the way we've been taught, we say, well, why didn't Joseph just open up everything and let the people just come and help themselves? And to that question, I would say once again, the Most High appears to have an order to everything. And when Pharaoh put Joseph in charge, he meant that. Pharaoh meant that. In other words, I trust this man of, with all of my issues. Because, you know, if, you, if you're in charge of stuff, you're feeling pretty good. Because you know you're going to be, if don't nobody else eat. Pharaoh know he's going to eat. Never quite looked at this thing this way. I have. And it's, 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 it's liberating because, you know, I've, I've, I've been encouraging us to watch, watch our spending. And I'm, I'm not bringing up those books anymore. I'm not. But I've had several people say, you know, that were walking out what I was asking them to do. And stuff start cropping up. Like I said, I know Sister Millie had some automobile problems. I did too. And uh, uh, my situation got remedied, but now, you know, I'm, I'm going back and forth. Well, do I get a new mule or do I keep the one I got? If I get, and when I say new, I mean another, new to me. <laughs> Folks, we need to be more strategic about our finances. Just like the people say, we ain't got nothing left, buy us and our land, and we'll be enslaved to Pharaoh, which represents government. Are you catching on? You know, now I heard now, but this on this social media, so I don't know how good, might have another stimulus check coming. Because see, uh, and if, if I don't give you a stimulus check, I'm going to try to pay off your student loans. And so we're thinking, oh, my God, that's a gift from God. Well, maybe, maybe not. Who am I to say? I'm trying to show you that the same thing that's happening there is happening now, but it's all in how you handle your finances. You see, even though there's five more years of famine coming, if we started in January watching our finances, we're now in position to take advantage. Well, cost of, cost of automobiles is coming down. Um, a certain uh, fast food place is coming out with a $3 meal because some other places are coming out with the, uh, some of the competitors that you know, and I'm not going to call nobody's name, but uh, uh, somebody got a four for four and they got a five for five and somebody else now got a $5 meal and the person that had uh, uh, a value menu, I think they're coming out with a $3 meal. Now, I don't know what's going to be in, on the meal. Uh, I, I, uh, you know, but folks, listen, all of this is happening because they're in search of patronage. They need customers. And I, I, I've shared with you, I see it, Rich. 
I've shared with you, you know, I've, I've said to you, I'm a capitalist, you know. And I started doing some research on capitalism. And, you know, I, I don't want to say that anymore, but I, I've operated uh, in the system, and I've had some victories, and I've had some losses. Stores. There's not just, there's, we all know which store roll back prices. Well, their competitors are rolling back prices now, too. Again, I'm not calling any names. And I pray that if you employ with them, all of those places, you stay employed and you get a raise. The stage is being set, folks. Everything is in gear to stay in your pocket. Four minutes. Mm, mm, mm. So Joseph, so they brought Joseph their livestock, and Joseph gave them food in exchange for their horses, flocks, cattle, and donkeys. All that year he provided them with food in exchange for all their livestock. When the year was over, they approached him again. We, can, we won't hide from my Lord. All our money is spent. The herd, the livestock belonging to that Lord. We have nothing left but our bodies and our land. Why should we die before your eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for food, and we will, and our land, be enslaved to Pharaoh. But then the people did have the Most High whispered in their ear and said, listen. And this is what they said, which was this, this is where the mercy of the Most High comes in. But also give us seed to plant so that we can stay alive and not die. Which brings me back to reciprocity. See, sometimes, saints, we hurt people more than help them by just coming in and doing stuff for them. Now, please do not get this twisted. I'm not saying don't help people. I'm saying, yes, help people. But use wisdom in your help. And if I'm not mistaken, there's a passage that says, basically, the most high helps those that help themselves. I'm going to close right there. We got a long way to go in this thing. I want to thank you for coming. And uh, I do, I, 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 I do, I do hope that you will receive what I've shared in the spirit in which you might not like the delivery. You might not like the vessel. Forget me, but please take in the words that were shared. And again, I don't know anybody's personal situation better than my own. The Most High didn't tell me anything about any of you. He's got a long list with my name on it. And it don't mean I don't care about anybody else. I'm saying he's not, he's not about broadcasting your business. He's dealing with you about your list. But we're going to make it. And, and, and hopefully we won't have to, here, take my house, take my broken down car. Well, I don't want your broken down car. That car too expensive to get fixed. You know. I'm hoping it don't get to that, but I, folks, it's gonna get, it's gonna get tricky. And see, all of this crazy news is coming out, and 
Don't take your eye off. Don't take your eye off your budget. Please don't. Watch. Watch your spending. I'm not telling you what to do with your money. I'm just saying, watch your spending. Now, we're going to try. We're going to try to have one another's back. We're going to do all we can in Torah to have one another's back. But we are going to ask that you begin to adopt a spirit of reciprocity. See, I, I, I'm done. God bless you. Uh,